So we have uh, this Muslim man uh, proving with receipts that uh, the West operate on uh, white supremacy to control others. The West impose uh, systems on others' beliefs. They try to impose uh, things on others around the world and Africa, Asia and South America can testify to that. So let's get into the video. You are very critical of Western civilization. Would you say that you are an Islamic or Muslim supremacist? Yes, of course. Of course. Muslim supremacist, of course. Islamic supremacist, of course. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's not a thing wrong with that. You're a Western supremacist. You believe in the supremacy of your values. You believe in the supremacy of your belief system. You believe in the supremacy of your belief system so much that you want the whole world to follow it. You try to force the entire world to follow your belief system because you believe it's so right. You came up with the what Universal Declaration of Human Rights. You took it upon yourself to decide what are the human rights for the entire uh, human race? Well, all right, but I mean, it's... That's supremacist. You believe that you have the authority, you have the right to decide what, uh, what are the rights of human beings everywhere in the world forever. And your belief in your right to do that uh, has been brutally manifest all around the world for centuries. Not for years, not for decades, for centuries. But the difference is that in Islam, to, be, to believe in the, the supremacy of Islam includes uh, everything about Islam, meaning that one of the things that we believe in is that we don't have the right to compel you to follow our beliefs. But you don't have that. You absolutely believe that you have the right to compel others to follow your beliefs. And the entire 20th century, and forget that, the 19th century, and as long as anyone can remember, uh, is testimony to the fact that you believe that you have every right in the world to force all of the people in the world to follow your belief system. That you have the right to impose that on people. And people all over the world, in Africa, in Latin America, in Asia, in the Middle East, everywhere in the world can testify to the fact that you don't believe that you don't have a right to compel people. You absolutely believe that you have the right to compel people through force, through invasion, through occupation, through colonialism, through imperialism, through extremely coercive economic policies. But Muslims, we don't believe that we have the right to impose that. We believe to you your way, to us our way, to you your deen, to you your, your belief system, your way of life, your lifestyle, your approach to the world, and to us ours. That's, what, that's part of our belief. So our supremacist nature about Islam includes uh, the fact that we don't have a right to compel you to follow our way. We believe that our belief is superior. And we believe that anyone who follows that belief uh, is following a superior belief system. And of course, I fully believe that following Islam is the, is, is the best way for any human being to live their life. And the perfect set of laws, the perfect set of ethics, the perfect set of morals for any individual to follow and for any state to follow. Being a Muslim supremacist isn't racial. Muslim isn't a race, it's not an ethnicity, it's a belief. And we absolutely believe in the perfection and superiority of what we believe in. We have absolute conviction about that, absolute commitment to that, certainty about that, yaqeen about that. But do you have that about yours? Do you have that conviction about yours? You're very busy trying to impose it all around the world, but when times get tough for you, your so-called enlightenment values go out the window, don't they? I mean, when there's too many uh, diverse opinions in your society, then you start creating bureaus and departments in the government for uh, combating so-called disinformation. Freedom of the press is out the window. When times get tough, you ban protests. You arrest people for protesting. Freedom of assembly out the window. When your belief system becomes difficult to maintain, difficult to preserve, you throw it under the bus without hesitation. But that's not the case with Muslims. Muslims throughout imperialism, throughout colonialism, throughout the Crusades, throughout poverty, throughout war, throughout invasion, throughout occupation, have maintained their belief. Even without the Khilafah, even without the Islamic State, and even without the Islamic Empire, Muslim societies are still strong and committed to Islam. We're still committed to our belief system. Nothing can change that. Maybe we have failed states, but we don't have failed societies. We don't have failed cultures. 
Our governments may fall, but our people remain the same. Our people remain uh, c committed to the same values, to the same morals, to the same moral laws, regardless of whether there's a government over them to enforce that. But that's not the case with you. Even though you're trying to impose your value system all around the world, when things become difficult in your own societies, you abandon your principles, you abandon your values. They're insufficient for uh, preserving the uh, security and the stability and the tranquility of your societies. They're insufficient, they're inadequate for that. So that alone, along with many, many other things, that alone shows me the inferiority of your value system, the inferiority of your belief system and the superiority of Islam. And your belief system, your enlightenment values, are extremely selectively applied in your society, throughout your history. They apply to some people and not others. It's like in uh, George Orwell's uh, animal form. Some people are more, more equal than others in your society. Your value system is not evenly applied. I mean, there's obvious examples everyone knows about. But let, let, just look at democracy, for example. You want democracy all around the world, supposedly. You say that you want democracy all around the world, so-called. But you don't even apply democracy. Let's just, let's just, for the sake of argument, let's pretend that you have a democratic system in the United States, and it's a, an actually healthy, functioning democratic system, which is obviously not the case. But let's just, for the sake of argument, pretend that it is. You don't believe that democracy is important, for example, in the private sector. You don't believe that businesses, that companies, that corporations should be democratic. Your, uh, your belief in the supremacy of democracy does not extend to the private sector. Corporations don't have to be democratic, do they? In fact, corporations are sacrosanct. It's sacrilegious to say that there should be any intervention in the private sector to make it actually accountable to the population, accountable to the public, accountable to the workers. And anyone who even talks about something like that, anyone who even suggests that companies and corporations should be democratic uh, will be persecuted. I mean, look at look at the struggle that, that organized labor had in the United States. They were coal miners were literally bombed from the sky when they tried to organize and have and, and secure their rights and have some kind of democratic uh, representation with the uh, coal companies. When just now, just now, when the railroad workers Railway workers were wanting to strike for better wages, for uh, more humane working conditions, uh, more rational and reasonable and fair uh, workloads that would actually help to guarantee the safety of those trains. Uh, Joe Biden and the government uh, prohibited them from striking. Where's the democracy? Because you don't mean the things that you say. You don't mean the values that you expose. You don't mean it. If you meant it, then you would apply it across the board. You would apply it to everybody in all institutions and in all uh, dimensions of your society. They would be, it would be applied everywhere, but it's not. Democracy doesn't belong in the workplace. Democracy doesn't belong in the uh, company, in the business, in the corporation. And no one's even supposed to suggest that it should. That's an inferior belief system. It's inadequate. It's inadequate. Uh, for building a, a civilization, for building a, 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 a cohesive society. Because look, the only group identity, the only sort of group identity that makes any sense at all, is not racial, it's not ethnic, it's not nationalistic, not even based on language or shared culture or uh, shared heritage. None of that makes any sense as a shared group identity. The only thing that makes sense is shared belief system. That's the only thing that makes sense as a group identity uh, from which you can build cohesion and camaraderie and brotherhood and solidarity between people. Only belief system. You can have a certain skin color and have nothing whatsoever in common with other people who have that skin color. You can have the same language and certainly have nothing in common whatsoever with someone who speaks the same language. You can, uh, I'm German-Irish, what do I have to do with all of the other people in the world who are German-Irish? Just because we're German-Irish, we have nothing in common. And yet I have more in common with a Muslim from Mali, with a Muslim from Indonesia, with a Muslim from Morocco, with a Muslim from uh, China, from Chechnya. 
I have more in common with them immediately. Okay, so let's do a little research and then we are going to compare the results on uh, how the Western world treats other continents or other nations uh, with the results here. So according to Google, white supremacy is the belief that uh, white people are superior to those of other races and thus should uh, dominate them. The belief favors the maintenance and defense of any power and uh, privilege held by white people. White supremacy has roots in the now discredi discredited doctrine of uh, scientific racism and uh, was a key, key justification for European colonialism. As a political ideology, it imposes and maintains cultural, social, political, historical, and or institutional domination by white people and non-white supporters. In the past, their ideology had been put into effect through socio-economic and legal structures such as the Atlantic slave trade, Jim Crow laws in the United States, the white uh, Australia policies from the 1890s to the mid-1970s, and apartheid in South Africa. This ideology is also today present among neo-confederates. White supremacy underlies a spectrum of contemporary movements including white nationalism, white separatism, neo nazism and the Christian identity movement. In the United States, white supremacy is primarily associated with the Ku Klux Klan, Aryan nations and the white American resistance movement, all of which are also considered to be anti-Semitic. The Proud Boys, despite uh, claiming a non-association with white supremacy, and have been uh, described in academic uh, contexts as being in the recent years, websites such as uh, Twitter, Reddit, and uh, Stormfront, and the, pre the, the presidential campaign for of uh, Donald Trump have uh, contributed to an increased activity and interest in white supremacy. Okay, guys, so let's compare that. The results with what this man is saying uh, i'm concluding that uh, africa mostly africa and uh, other nations um, being controlled by you know the western world they are bullies that's what i can say these people are bullies please guys let me know what you think about this in the comments section below and i'll see you in my next video peace